Hello, we welcome you to another live session from Roots Tech this evening. We are very excited to be with you wherever you are from around the world. We hope that you will find this a really engaging and excellent experience. We're going to be hearing from Andrea Benchnader, who will be speaking to us tonight. She'll be taking your questions, which you can either put them in the chat or you can actually ask directly. She'll be talking about how Jump Research can help you and how you can access great support that she offers and other people provide. My name is Keith Pamford. I work for Family Search. We will, without further ado, hand over to Andrea. So please put your questions into the chat. We'll take them there, or you can ask directly as she gets going. Um, if we can't get all your questions done, there will be opportunities to post them later with other people from Family Search who may be able to help you. This presentation will be recorded. So if you miss it or you lose connection, please don't worry, you'll be able to see it at a later time on, on Roots Tech. Thank you very much. Andrew, we're very grateful to have you and we welcome you this evening to be with us. We're very excited to hear from you. So please, with further ado, we'll hand directly over to you to start us off. Thank you, Keith, and, and welcome to everyone. That's very exciting. We see like 200, 320 people. And I'm actually excited to be joined by my colleague, Lars Thiele. He's from Dresden and he's our member for the Saxony area. Like I, I'm the, the chairwoman of the Association of German Speaking Professional Genealogists. And maybe I introduce myself briefly and then Lars will introduce himself so, and then we're just delighted to, to answer any questions you may have. So um, again, my name is Andrea Benschneider. I've been a professional genealogist here in Hamburg, Germany for the past 18 years already. And some of you may know me because I, I worked for many TV programs such as um, Who Do You Think You Are? and actually appeared on camera there also among others. And um, yeah, for 18 years, I had the pleasure of, of serving many, many people from around the world and helping them finding their roots, finding their ancestors, sometimes even finding living relatives. And so we're very delighted to be here. And now I hand over to Lars. Hello, nice to meet you all. Um, my name is Lars Thiele. Um, I'm the um, professional genealogist in Saxony in the eastern part of Germany today. And um, Saxony is my specialty. Um, I'm very familiar with their archives and their, um, with their institutions on the um, Saxon Free State today and also um, familiar with their history of the Saxony in the past time, although they're um, bordered um, at the boundaries um, of the former kingdom of Saxony. If you have any questions to that area, I'm your man. Yeah, and, and my specialty, among others, are, is the immigration, the German immigration to overseas. Like, since I'm located in Hamburg and we have this treasure of having this really last complete selection of records when it comes to immigration records, hardly any records are missing. So, so that's really a treasure. And from that on, I, I basically assisted people. Basically, my specialty is Northern Germany, but I can help out with, by working with, with Lars and my other colleagues that like we all cover all of Germany, the former German provinces. And so, um, and I see there are several questions coming in already. Um, Keith, do you want to? Yeah, let's take, well, we, we won't do them all, we just tell as we can come to some here. Um, there's a question about immigration records. So how to find immigration records and then to go back from those. So if you can help with that, where would somebody start? Um, if you can't find immigration record for a family member who's left Germany, come to the United States, what would you do? Where would that go? Where would you begin that? Um, well, there are several other um, items. It's like the first one would be that I would look for the last. So if there's no immigration record, it might have a couple of, there might be a couple of reasons for that. It's like if depending on the age of an immigrant, it was if they were too old and were afraid that they wouldn't be let on board because they may have not been accepted access to America, they changed their date. Or if they were too young and they were possibly running away from being drafted to the military. So they made themselves older also, or they used one of the other middle names that they had. So that's always something to look for. 
if you know roughly where an immigrant came from, usually the state archives in that area have also databases or the um, local genealogical societies have databases with immigrants. And, and so you could enter there and see if the person possibly filed for immigration. One of the reasons why you may not find them is because, for example, the Bremen records, most of them are destroyed and do not exist anymore. Or again, they change their names or um, um, one of the, well, 80% of the people who ask about their immigrant ancestor always claim, well, he was, he, um, he jumped ship. So, um, well, 80, if 80% 80 of all the immigrants did that, then the cruise lines obviously would be out of, out of business and wouldn't have made it until today. So um, that's not really the case, but some of them actually also may have worked as, as sailors to go their way over. Or, or they took non-immigrant ships, such as freight ships, depending on when it was. So I would look for all, like, look at, like, which names are, which first names might be possible. I would look, if you know the region, like, let's say, Baden or Hanover or anything, look at the state archive there, if there are any, any, records there about immigrants because they may have filed for immigration like a permit for immigration so that's that's what i would do otherwise please feel free to contact our website we have a chat and we have a booth here also and um and there's a chat and or you drop us an email and then we can look into it if you it's like more specific questions thank you um, i'm going to mount a couple of questions together a few people are asked saying that they have ancestry from prussia but they're now asking because that's my part of Poland or where they think they're coming from Poland. Is it to any of the German genealogists? What advice would you give about this kind of thing where borders have changed and people have lived in one country and now it's another and back and forth again? Um, well, um, usually, I mean, I mean, like Prussian records, particularly, there are also possibilities that they're located in Berlin, for example, because there is a Prussian um, archive also. So, so like if you have Prussian records, which are nowadays in Poland, there may be still different places, different archives where you could actually find records. Some of them might be filmed by Family Search, for example. Some of them might be located at, at archives in Poland or Russia or wherever it is. Some of them may be located in, in Germany, in German archives nowadays. So, so that's also, it always depends on like the time and exactly the location where it was. Thank you. Okay, What's that's the... excellent. Just another quick question here. Somebody's saying obviously they don't they don't speak German, but they obviously need to engage with a German language speaker in in Germany. How would they begin to evaluate people such as yourself to know who to look for if they were looking for somebody to help them do research? So if you completely have no clue about Germany or the language, where would you go to find information to find people such as yourself? That's the point. It's like we are here from the Association of German Speaking Professional Genealogists. And so um, I can type in the website and, and the email address in the chat in a moment. And, and then um, you can just contact us there. We have almost covered every area of Germany. We have a colleague in, in Austria also for Austria, Hungary. And, and, and so we have one email that you can send to, and then we distribute the request to the people with their local specialty. Okay, here's another quick one. Are there records surviving for the Prussian Navy? Do you know? Sorry, for what? For are, are there records for the Prussian Navy as opposed to the German Navy? So going back to the time of the Prussian um, or Prussia? Any records um, of the navy then, or the military then? Where would somebody go? Um, well, well, the the Prussian military is is that's one of the most toughest things to research in Germany, because um, basically the 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 main archive with Prussian military records was destroyed in May 1945. So most of the records are gone. However, respectively, most of the name indexes are gone. So if you, you're looking for someone specifically that you know served in the Prussian army, you would exactly need to know in which, which um, 
company and, and you really would need to know where exactly he served and when because there are no name indexes so you would have to go through books with all the regiments listed in but that's that's really like the needle in the haystack thank you okay okay so again quick question here i have answers from saxony and i don't know what resources are available to start my research there or, or can i find a map of the area so how would somebody begin there map of saxony yeah, yeah. okay so that, maybe that's my part to answer on that yes, topic um <laughs> Yes, where I can find. Um, I think the first um, first solution is to look at the Mayard Gazetteer um, to look for the right place. And um, if you are um, sure, really sure that the place is um, Saxony or um, the um, former part of the Saxon territory, um, you can um, have. Um, yeah, you can you can go to and to another um, platform. It's called. Uh, um the um oh, or <laughs> I, I i look it for a moment I, I will do it in the in the chat so um the link for the website it's a historical um directory for saxony so you can um, type in the place name and you will uh, show all information about this name of place and you will also get a, a map and that the place um, will be located on the map. So I will Thank type in the, uh, put in the, the link to that um, tool, online tool in the chat, okay? Thank you very much, okay. This is another question about emigration from Bremen. Are there any records and where would you access those records for people who emigrated from Bremen? Um, for Bremen, basically only um, departure list from the 1920s onward exists. Um, the years before were at one point intentionally destroyed because they didn't see the value of them and they thought like they're so old so up until 1870 they were destroyed and then afterwards the rest that was still existent that was um, then destroyed in the war. But um, also I did a presentation, a series on German immigration from Bremen and, and Hamburg and their handouts and it says specifically which years ex exist for which port. So that might be worth checking out. Okay, and here's another question. Um, somebody who's visiting Germany this summer and they want to visit their father's relatives graves. They've heard that the graves are only kept for a few years and since they've gone more than 50 years, will the graves still be there at the, at the cemetery? Um, usually the German graves are rented for 25 years. So unless like another family member was laid to rest, like, I don't know, 20 years after the first person. So then it would automatically be extended the rent. But then if, if the last person of the family was, was buried there 25 years ago, then, then most likely it doesn't exist anymore. But it's, um, it's always worth checking with the cemetery office. Okay. And would they still have a record though where that had burial that had taken place? Definitely, definitely. And that's always a good source because you would also have then contact information of the person who paid for the grave, who took care of, of, of putting the flowers and the upkeeping of the grave. So possibly you can find a living relative that way also. Okay. Okay, okay. here's a question about illegitimacy. So um, so this is saying that their great grandmother was born in Germany in 1862. Um, and obviously looking for how would you, uh, firstly, is that unusual at that time? Um, and what records would there be for children that are born in that way? So if a child's illegitimate, what records would there be and how would you access them? Um, basically, you would have the regular records that you would have with any child born at that time. And that, that would be either the, the church record, it only would not most likely not state the father in there. Um, or depending if it was after the seven, 1870s, then you would have civil records where potentially the father isn't listed either, but they are then also sometimes like if it was a close knit parish, for example, sometimes the, the, the pastor wrote down the name of the father, or, but, it, but it was mentioned as the child was born illegitimately. 
Sometimes it's that also like later it was legitimized through the marriage of the parents, if that was the case. So, so but usually I would go, if I'm looking for a father, I would go first and depending on the time, could look into the, the, the church book record. So possibly because sometimes by looking at the godparents, you may also find family members, like you may find like the, the sister of the father or something. So, so that's always worth checking out. Okay, thank you. Here's another question. Um, my second great grandfather, Klaus Klassen, came from Emden in 1840. And I understand that the area uses a patronomic naming system. How do I go about trying to find his parents? <laughs> Um, we get some really deep questions here, so. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Um, well, well, basically, you would look for his birth certificate, and and like if he came over in the 1940s, then you look for the birth certificate. You would have his parents listed on there, and and then take it from there, basically, and then go one generation by generation backwards. Okay. What time frame were records not currently accessible in Germany, i.e. So vital records are only released after a set period of time? Is there a specific set time for all records or do they vary depending on what the record is or the area that the record's from? Um, usually there is an archival law that um, we have civil records in Germany as of 1874 when it was the Prussian area, respectively 1876 when it was the rest of Germany. And these records still basically are kept up to this day. And as of 2009, you can have access to these records more freely. If um, for any birth record older than 110 years, any marriage record older than 80 years, and every death record older than 30 years, no restrictions apply. But if you're looking for someone who was born only 80 years ago, for example, then you would have to prove that you're rela personally related and directly related to the person. And that means your like, direct relationship usually covers the parents, the grandparents, siblings, children, grandchildren. Uncle and aunt or cousins are not considered direct relationship. Thank you. Okay. So can a professional person such as yourself have access to church records that aren't allowed online because part of the book is restricted records? So would you be able to look at the deaf records, for instance, that would be restricted for others? Um, well, they are putting more and more um, church records online also as, as we speak. Um, Many Catholic records are, met, are online already. However, they also have these restrictions when it comes to the years. They are not all freely available up until the present day. Um, and the Lutheran records are also coming up slowly but steadily. Um, for them, there is a, a, is a fee. You need to have a membership. And the problem is they don't have any databases attached. You only have the images, so you need to be able to, to read the old hand German scripts and, and need to understand um, German, basically. And again, it, it's like until everything is online, it, it will, like, until then, my colleagues and I are the ones who go to the archives, who go to the church parishes and, and do the research there by hand, basically. But just to follow up the question, there's a lot of questions similar to this, but so I'm trying to locate my grandfather and his two siblings. The birth records are in Hamburg. They were born in 1905, 1908 and 1909. Do you know when the state archives will allow access to these records? It's been 113 years since the youngest one was born. So are those records currently available or do you know when that would be? Um, the Hamburg records up to a certain point are even available on Ancestry. Usually what happens, like if, if we're talking about these 110 years, so we're talking about anyone born um, after, bef before 1912 would technically be available now to be looked at. Obviously, there's always like, usually there's about like four or five months period. So, so that the records from 1911, like from, which would have been passed on from the civil registries to the archive, usually it takes them three, four, five months to get them into the archival system until they're 
available. So, and again, like if it's if it's like direct relations and you can prove that, then you can contact also the, the civil registry where the um, certificate still might be located. Okay, I'm again, I'm going to mark about a, a number of questions, but a lot of people are actually asking about sort of locations in general. We're going to find out if the place is actually a real place and whether it's correct the spelling, I guess, the pronunciation. So for that kind of question where people are trying to actually find, is this a real place now? You know, the grandfather said he came from so-and-so, wherever it may be. Um, are, what kind of maps are available or, again, research support you could provide or offer or where would you go to look at these, to try and find these places? Because obviously, if you're thousands of miles away, you don't have any local context to what a name is somewhere in, even though it's been pronounced right, spelt right or so on. What would you recommend? There's a whole mass of questions very similar to that. So okay, yeah. rather than take individual people, I'd rather just try and, because we'd be here forever if we talk about every every person <laughs> who's put a question in. So I hope you don't mind those who put the questions in, but it's very difficult to go through hundreds of asking similar things. Yeah, no, but that, that's okay. Um, um, I think in, in one of my presentations, I also showed two maps that exist where you can type in the last name and it shows you the distribution of a last name in Germany. One was in the 1890s, one was in, in the 1990s or something. So unless you have a last name like Miller or Smith or Meyer and Schmidt, um, where you obviously would be lost and it wouldn't be any help if you have a name that's, that's very local or, or fairly fairly rare last name, then you have a good chance to, to locate the area where they're from. And then I would just be looking at really like one other thing that I usually do, I, I look at family search and type in the name and see what towns do these names come up with. And, and, and then really it would be going through each and every individual town and see if, if you find the people there. Okay, thank you. Here's an interesting question. Somebody's asking their um, ancestor emigrated to Australia, 1889 or 1898, and they're asking why Australia? Was there an incentive for people to go to different countries? So was there things that drew people particularly? You know, if you're going to leave Germany, why would you go to Australia, not America or somewhere else? Are there any particular economic or particular reasons you'd know of that would make that be a driver in people's lives? Um, well, it also had to do sometimes with the profession. So a lot of, of wine dressers went to Australia, for example. So, so um, then it also depended on if you may have had someone in the family who went there by accident, maybe, and then he wrote letters home and then the whole village followed or something. So I, I know in, in some cases it, it had to do with that the... Um, the shipping lines had so-called shipping agents who traveled through the villages and, and like really advertised their trips. And then depending on which shipping line they worked for, so they may, may have sold trips to North America or to Brazil or to Australia or to wherever. So sometimes it was even funded by, by the, the, the community chest because like it was, was less expensive to pay for the, the voyage to overseas than to, to like feed a whole family in the poor house in, in, in the village. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so stay there. Right, um. I see the question, when did surnames start? Um, basically they started in the 12th and 1300s. So, so that was quite a long time ago. And, and, and then there were a couple of different, um, it had to do with with either based on on the the town where they came from or based on on where they lived within a town or there were like five categories were how these last names were were established and and how they happened and developed over the years okay thank you okay somebody's traced their jewish ancestry that lived in small towns in the ryan land back for civil records to early 1800s mm -hmm. are there any surviving jewish records from the 1700s i guess to the 1800s they're asking or what records would would be available do you think um well, or where could they look for those kind of uh, information okay um yeah and um, well the jewish records usually um in most cases the, you have pretty good chances to find a jewish civil records until the 1840s before that it, it really it, it really depends it's, it's a very individual situation like like I, there are certain records that i've seen that go back to the 1750s but that is rather the the exemption than than that it's the rule so um 
you really would need to, I, I would contact um, probably the, the local, the city archive or municipal archive and see what they might have available. There are, again, it's all like Rhineland, okay. Um, it might be worth checking the, the archive in, in Leipzig in Saxony because they have a big collection of genealogical records and they have a lot of, of these um, Jewish records also. However, most of them are more the Prussian area and, and towards the, the east. Um, yeah, I, I, I would go to a, the, the state archive or municipal archive, city archive level. Thank you. Okay, another question here. Uh, um, okay, somebody's had a lot of family line with original information that results in extended family here in America with mental illness. So are there mental health records available from Germany from the mid 1800s backwards or forwards from there? Um, well, it's, it's similar to the graves. I think medical records are kept for like 50 or 60 years. So um, if it, it depends. You may be lucky that you still have like a hospital book or something that may always be possible, but but usually I, I would not expect that really. So so mm -hmm. there, there may be there may be information that you, you may find hints about something like it may be written in a church record, but but it, it's like there may be different places, but but it, it would really be a very extensive church uh, search and, and it's not guaranteed that you actually would find the information. Okay, so another question about this border sort of thing. So some of the second grandmother was listed in Bavaria in one sense as an impression in another. Um, she came to America in 1892. Don't find her in any ship registries. So again, this whole German Poland border thing. Again, best to talk to somebody who's like directly, I assume, to get a, an answer or help on that kind of thing. Um, yeah, that is too specific. I would need to have more information about that. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay, so somebody's asking this. Okay, you mentioned passports were needed for early immigration. Okay, where um, where would you search these passport records now? So if people had a passport to leave Germany, assuming they potentially were planning to come back to Germany, mm -hmm. where are those records, or what would you suggest? Um, well, as I mentioned in my talk, it's like if you emigrated and had no intention of coming back, you did not need a passport. So you only needed a passport if you were intending to return to Germany. And um, there are basically two places. Again, I would look at a local level city archive, state, county or district archive, something like that to see if they have passport applications there. Um, another one is like if, if people, like for anyone who wants to gain German citizenship nowadays because they had German ancestors, um, the other um, alternative would be going through the consulate system. So the foreign ministry has an archive here in Germany where they have all the consulate records. So if, if, if your ancestor went to a German consulate, for example, in Chicago or in, I don't know, in Sao Paulo or wherever in the world, then there may be records still available in Berlin at the special archive. Thank you. That's very helpful. Okay. Okay. A question. My grandfather was born in Salzburg around 1884. I've heard that all the records were destroyed during the Second World War. Is that true? I guess this applies just look. It's not to Salzburg, but a lot of people will be asking this question about records that, that's in general. Too specific. Please feel free to contact us. <laughs> we can look into that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's just see. Um, Okay, so somebody's asking a basic question that their family came in 1929 to the US, I was assuming from this, this question here, and because that's so soon or relatively not so far back, um, is there any chance again to sort of access records and so on from that time period because it's not so long ago, or again will they come into problems about availability or access to records? Sorry, you know, I think what you're asking, the longer back the records are, probably it's easy to find sometimes. Mm -hmm. And information. When was that? 1929. Um, 
that's possible. That that should be possible to find records there. Mm -hmm. Usually, like like there are two different restrictions. So one is this when it comes to the personal data. Again, this 110 years, this 80 years, and 30 years when it comes to the civil registry records. And the other one, um, other restriction is like archival records which have details specific details on persons they are usually restricted by for a period of 60 years however again if you can prove that you're related to the person or you have a good reason to have access to it then it, it would be you, you can basically request that access and you should get be able to to access them yeah thank you okay I see the question, mid-18th Königsberg Catholic Church records. Hmm, that's a tough one. I know the Lutheran records to a certain extent are available on family search. So um, I'm, I'm not sure about the, the Catholic records, if, if any exist there. Okay, so I'm gonna gener generalize this question because it's quite specific, but this is somebody looking for records, I guess people who worked on the railways across Germany, obviously moved around with that job. So mm -hmm. rather than be the individual, but Again, could you advise on if we could perhaps find information about the individual or his family or children and so on? There is actually a association of, of people who worked for the railways because it, it's like actually it was started by people who nowadays work or retired from the railways and they started this genealogical association around that. So, so obviously... I'm not sure how how vast their database really is, but but I know they exist. And um, yeah, what, what do I do about this? Um, I would need to look that up. It's like I, I don't know have that address on the top of my head now. No, that's great. Just a, but there are places to go to. That's yeah. the key. Thing. I think Thank it was in much. the area of Ludwigsburg or something like or Ludwigshafen or something like that. It's like I know they they last they did the the. Um, Deutsche Genealogen Tag in Ludwigshafen, meine ich. Da war ich nicht. Ja, okay. But... Keine Ahnung, kann ich nicht <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. But I see that you're so great that you add all kinds of, of information and links and stuff. Yeah, and I, I try to I try thing. to catch them all, but it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's not possible. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay, again, here, here's one, a nice easy one for you while you're on. Is there a difference between saying Saxony or the Kingdom of Saxony? So are they the same place? Are they different places? And would that depend again on the area that you're looking? Sorry, pardon. Okay, so somebody's urgent. saying they're looking, they want to know whether Saxony, and then they've got a record that says the Kingdom of Saxony, are they the same place? Um, or would they be overlapping depending yes, on the period? Par yes, partly, but not in total. It depends uh, uh, where the place, um, where located in the time you are uh, searching for. So there's a lot of changing, um, bound changing of boundaries, changing of, of borders, changing um, of... Um, of territories because of um, changing um, administrations and 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 wars and so on. It's it uh, depends on the on the um, specific year you are looking for. Okay. So it's not easy to answer. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, okay, another question, again, general one here. And again, this goes back to, I guess, the guilds or trades and skills. This is somebody who's looking for master carpenters. So I guess we could probably cover off all of the trades. Generally, is there records of trades, guilds, or so on that would record people of, you know, like master craftsmen or whatever for particular carpenters, whatever it might be? Yes, there are. Um... Usually these guild records are also either at the state archives or the, the municipal archives. I, I, I usually, when, when I, 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 it's important to know the place where they had their business or where they did their profession. Um, usually I always start on the most local level. I would begin by a city archive. They usually know the best where they have it. And if they don't have certain collections, they could usually tell you where to go next. So then the next the higher level in the hierarchy might be the district archive, followed then by a state archive. And, and most of them, most of the state archives have, have finding aids on their websites already. Most of them also have English uh, the, the possibility to to also have it in English translated or the databases are there. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. Okay. So this is a and question sorry, of it, if you... when you, as you mentioned, a, 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 like master carpenter, it, it's like sometimes even you can find like like they had to keep books when they traveled around to to the, as part of their apprenticeship. So 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 you may even find these books. They are sometimes even still kept at the archives. Wow, that's fantastic. Thank you. Okay, hey, somebody wants to know about. Um, people who fought in the First World War, so 1914, about military service records. Um, I guess, I guess it's definitely about that general question rather than the individual specific one, but in general, those records from that era, um, again, who's got them, where do you go, or okay, where would you start? Um, it's, um, that again, it's a little bit difficult. Um, the records from Bavaria exist. They are located on Ancestry. I think the records from Sa Saxony also still exist. I think they are at the Saxon State Archive, I think, maybe. Yes, um, and I think some of in, in West Germany, like, like I mean, like North Rhine-Westphalia, that area. So I think some of them exist also. The majority, particularly all the Prussian ones, were lost during World War II in this bombing of this military archive. However, at the, in Berlin, at the Federal Archive Berlin, you have where you have the records for the soldiers fighting from World War II, they have the medical records of soldiers from World War I. So there too, it may be, so if, if you know, they didn't come from Bavaria, they didn't come from Saxony, and I, I don't have the, the third region that still exists present right now, but there at the Federal Archive in Berlin, they have the so-called um, sick hospital, the um, sick books, um, and, and, and they, there you can inquire about both the, the soldiers fighting in World War I and World War II. Okay, thank you. Okay, that's really good. Okay. okay, I think this is going to be a general one, but I think you've kind of answered it already. But this is about people that emigrated from Germany to Peru, again, looking for their records, immigration records. I assume you're going to say the same kind of answer, basically, either to look at the records in the country or, again, if they made to the consulate mm -hmm. or so on, it would be the best exactly. starting point. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. And I know that that, that um... hi George, <laughs> thank you. Um, and so yeah, yeah, I, I know that that also in Hamburg you have records of people going to Southeast Asia and, and Africa and everywhere. So the Caribbean should be possible. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. Here's a question about somebody who has ancestors who originally came from Switzerland to Germany. And they're asking them about would there be records of emigration into Germany for that or is, yeah. is that going to be something that you could advise on? Well, actually, I would think that, that usually they went to like the southwest of Germany, like to Württemberg, that area. And then it's my experience that it's just written in the church books that they came from Switzerland. I again it also probably depends on when it was and and so um that would be a good question to send to our general email and then we had pass it on to a a colleague of ours it's always like if, if you work with a with a professional genealogist what's always helpful to know is like we always need to have the names of the person in question we need to have like roughly a period when it was 1850s or 1900 or 1910 or so and if possible a place information so and even if it's just like the state that already is helpful but but just like <laughs> we're looking for i don't know john smith from the midwest is, is about as helpful as looking for johan meyer from prussia <laughs> without any further information so so and sometimes we're actually able to find johan meyer from prussia but but still it's like the more details we have the easier it is and i saw that earlier there was a question of how do you know the the which religion your ancestors had so partially you can probably figure it out from depending on the region where they came from because it's like some are like towards the south, you have more Catholics than, than in the north, for example, or you have it also from, from based on the last name, you can sometimes like see it. So, so but, but usually that is also always helpful to know if, if, if you know the religion of your ancestors and, and you want to work with 
one of my colleagues or I or myself, then that always helps also because it makes it's easier for us to figure out what research possibilities are there based on the records because sometimes the Catholic records for a town still may exist, but the Lutheran records were lost or something. So there's always uh, a number of uh, questions concerning uh, Catholics and Protestant records. How about uh, records from other denominations and more, uh, possibly minorities? Uh, there was a specific question on Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, if uh, one of the ancestors is known to have been a Jehovah's Witness, uh, do we, does that help as a starting point? That is actually a really good question. I have to admit that in 18 years, I've never had a family research that was a Jehovah's Witness. So honestly, I would actually start by calling the, the, the temple here in Hamburg and, and ask them like where I would turn to. So it's like, honestly, I've never done that. So I know for, for like Hamburg, we, we, have, we have French um, reformed, we have Dutch reformed, we have British Church of England, we have Jews from, from Portugal and, and, and German speaking, um, Jewish community, we we had uh, we have Mennonites. It's like like they're the Huguenots with with their special research center that they have with a database online. So so Jews obviously we any kind. So so we had a lot of them. Yes, I also think it's the best um, the best advice we can give to you is um, to get in contact with local institutions um, to the very specific or religious groups or. Um, so you will get answers there if there are any records um, stored or whether uh, historical records are stored. So get in contact with the local institutions or with the general um, institutions. You, I'm sure you will find um, a web page mm. for that. Okay, here's a question. Is there an online repository for German newspapers? So is there one place you can go to to access most or all of... German newspapers or what German newspaper records are available? Hmm. Um, I came across a website a few months ago. I don't recall it anymore. I doubt that there is one central place for all of Germany. Um, I know that there is, like again, in the North Rhine-Westphalia area, there is a rather big central archive with newspapers but you i doubt that they have them online um and otherwise i know that old newspapers usually are are located at the 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 local um university libraries they usually uh, have them yeah so state libraries or something like that it, the, the libraries um are um Called differently in the in the in the different um, parts of, of Germany. Another question here: uh, Was it able? Was a young woman able to travel alone on a ship in uh, the eighteen hundreds? Absolutely. My one of my first research projects I had there was this eighteen year old girl who was the only German among a whole ship full with Russian families. And they were on the ship for six weeks, and I doubt that she had a nice journey there. <laughs> like just like with being like the only person like with speaking your language, and it, it's like, yeah, they were. It, it, alongside that, if uh, in the 1800s, if a woman had an illegitimate uh, child uh, and married um, it, uh, later and had more children a few years later. Um, would those usually be worth the same father? Um, I know of, of, of women who had, I don't know, five children with five different men. Um, usually in, in, in the bigger towns, it was you needed to get the permission to be allowed to get married. And that usually was entailed that you had to pay a fee. So in the if you were from the poor working class, you usually could not afford that. And plus, if you wanted to get married, you needed to prove that you had enough money to actually support a family. And so if, if that wasn't given, you didn't get the permission to get married. And that's why there were so many illegitimate children. Plus, there was no birth control. But that's a whole other story. <laughs> 
Okay, um, here's a question. So this is asked about DNA tests. So I guess really the bulk of the question is asking where the majority of Germans who have DNA tests, what company do they use or what do they post? those two? Is there a specific one that's more, more popular in um, Germany? I would think that actually my heritage is better for for like more Germans have tested with my heritage than probably with ancestry. That's my feeling. Um, and and so and like from my own experience on ancestry, I only found a lot of people in America, but I do not find that many people in Germany. And since you know, it, it's interesting to see where other. I don't know, distant relatives, uh, how many people immigrated to the US and to see to find relatives there, but it doesn't help me to go backwards in time in Germany. So in there, my heritage is in, in my opinion or, or my experience also is currently is better for doing research in Germany. Thank you. If there are um, people migrating from Germany to the United States, are there, is there a list of uh, possible ships that they could have taken and uh, that we could check for passenger lists and so on? Um, well, the, the Hamburg passenger lists are all on Ancestry in, in a database that was originally, it, it was a, a project that they had at the Hamburg State Archive where they had disabled people um, and handicapped people who, who transcribed these passenger records with the 5 million people in there. And, and so this complete database is available on Ancestry. And, and, and the ship records, also the passenger lists themselves and, and the handwritten name indexes written at that time, they are also filmed on, on family search. And, and additionally, there are also some other databases available on, on my heritage and, and on local um, genealogical societies in Germany and or uh, the, the bigger state archives. Yeah. Okay, here's a question about asking about generally understanding and reading old German from the 1800s. And obviously, can you or your colleagues and so on help to with translating record? I've recommended translators, or can you do that as part of the services that you and other professional journalists offer? Absolutely. In order to become a member in our association, you need to prove that you're able to read these letters. That's just a prerequisite for to actually become a member here. So, so we really vouch for the quality of all of our, our members that, that we have, um, and they, they have to have a, go through an entrance test, basically, and, and show a proof of their work so, so that we can say, they do fulfill our standards. And, and so we don't have a certification process as, as certain organizations have it in America, for example. So, so but, but we're doing this on a smaller level, but, but nonetheless, it's, it's like we kind of say, like, if you work with one of our members, you have the guarantee that it's OK. And if you have a problem, you can always come to us, like to the board, and, and then we will assist you with any problems that might be there. Thank you. OK. I saw a lot of migration uh, in mid 1800s to Austria. One of the questions um, was there a reason for this that you would know that could have triggered this, or is that just a uh, personal choice? Um, I don't know what time uh, the, the 1850s, and then it probably depends on from when, from where they left. So, so it, it, I would usually then look at like whatever region they they left to go to Austria. So that would be a great question for our Austrian member. And otherwise, like oftentimes it's, it's um, I don't know, for the Dutch, who do you think you are version? We did it, they, they had, a, had an ancestor in, in, in Thuringia and, and um, he left in 1805 to go to the Netherlands. And, and you could clearly see, okay, that was when the Prussian army came and invaded that area. So the young men left there because they didn't want to go to the army. So, so uh, to the Prussian army. So, so usually you would need to look like if you know where they came from and went to Aust Austria in that case, I would look at a local level, like what history, what, what events took place around that time, what might have triggered that. Because usually that wasn't, like depending on, on where they came from, that was not the, the common migration pattern, basically. At least not at that time anymore, I think. I think they went to Austria and then to Hungary 
that that all was was earlier i think mm -hmm. okay so do you have any associates or colleagues or could you recommend somebody could help with volg and german research in russia so um yes and and there's actually one great association also has a booth here um the america like the american association of, of germans from russia so it's worth checking out their stand so it's like actually i would recommend them although i would assume that it's a tough region to do research in right now <laughs> i think so okay. i was about to start a research in ukraine and so i think we can put that on hold for a while <laughs> Okay. 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 Here's a question, Jenny, about hyphenated names and what would be the reason for those? Now, is there a general reason for why somebody would have a hyphenated name, um, or is it like something to do with their lineage of being sort of rich or coming from a particular background, or is it just a, it could just be a random thing? Um, it, it could be a random thing. I think it been also depends on again when it was because like in germany there's certain naming laws so you couldn't just do that unless you had like and, and unless the the laws were that way it, it, it's like also it's the same it's like even nowadays it is this way it, it's like um i can use a hyphenated name but my husband possibly couldn't or something and now they change it again that everybody can or so and um I just had a case where they changed the name in the 1920s and, and it's because the name before that was Maya, which again is, is, is very common. And so they added the, 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 the mother's maiden name basically and, and, and made a hyphenated double name and all the children had this name and everyone since then has this name, but they, they waited until the parents were dead. So, so it's like, and, and, and they went through a lot of a, a big process and, and many files to actually get this done and to, to have a court of law decide or agree on, on this name change. Okay, thank you. Here's another question. Are you aware of any German repositories or libraries holding historic German language newspapers published in the United States? There are two. Someone just sent me an email about that. <laughs> it's like I would need to look this up. So it's a question I think, where can I post this? Um, I know someone really just sent me an email about this last week. So I cannot look it up right now, but We have a, I, I have an idea. Um, I read this down. We have another session like this one tomorrow evening at a little bit earlier than today. And so then I will have that answer ready for them. Wonderful, thank you. Also the one for the railroad. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's a general, what would be the best um, company to use for German research, so we're talking about ancestry, my heritage, family search, where would you recommend, obviously we could look, use all of them, but where would you recommend people to start with, who would be the best one to start, would you recommend? I know that may be a... Well, well, the problem with it is also like, like I, I have a client currently like who I tried to help seven years ago and I didn't manage to help him then um, because like all the information he had was not correct somehow. It's like he has a headstone and he has a marriage certificate of his grandfather who was supposedly born in 1873 in Hamburg. There was no one ever with this last name in Hamburg. There was no one born on that date in Hamburg. And so, so we're stuck, but it's, it's like, since all of these websites constantly add more content, nowadays it would be great to go and revisit it all again and see maybe now we find his name in a database. And so there, there is no... It, it depends, like if you're signed up or a member of all of these sites, then I don't have a preference. It, it's just like, I don't know, today I start with this and tomorrow I start with another site. But it's like, obviously, if you do not have paid subscriptions, I would start with Family Search probably because it's free and then would go through the free sites before I then extend the search to the paid 
fact. Yeah, thank you. Okay, divorce records. Mm -hmm. So where, what's the story for those? So where would you look for those again? And when would they be available from and to? So is there like a cutoff period when, when you can't access that information from? Um, you, I, I would check the family courts um, and they could, or, or I would check the, the city archive. I would also put it possibly the, the state or district archives. It always depends. In Hamburg, unfortunately, it was the case that most of the divorce files prior to 1933 were destroyed and they only kept like, I don't know, 20 examples or something and they go far back. I mean, I've seen in Mecklenburg, I've seen divorce files from 1820. So it's, it's like, it depends. Like it's like the, the, the problem is up until 1871 when the German empire was founded, I think there were some 30, 40 different kingdoms, duchies, um, free cities and so on. And every state and every free city, every duchy in kingdom had their own rules and regulations. They had their own records that they kept. So we do not have a luxury of a 1950 census coming up because there was no such thing in all of the German states. They were like in, 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 in in, in different states, they only they did a census, but they only did it for statistical reasons and never kept the records. Or um, it, 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 it always depends. And, and so that's very difficult about doing research in Germany because you do not have one rule to go by because it all depends on when and where an event took place. Thank you. Unfortunately, we have to draw our presentation to an end. I'm very sad that we have to do that, but we're conscious of other um, classes and lectures on. Thank you so very much to both of you for the time you've taken and for the wonderful answer you've given. This presentation is recorded, so you will be able to access this and review it to look through. Andrew, thank you so very much for your time. Lars, thank you very much for your time. We're grateful that both of you take time out to be with us, and we are very, very thankful. Hopefully, those who didn't get the questions answered, there's hundreds and hundreds of questions, we can that. respond yeah. to you directly. I think that's probably the best advice that we can give you is contact you and obviously take things from there. There, there are at least another hundred questions we didn't even get anywhere near. So thank you so very much, everybody. Andrew, thank you. Have a lovely evening and um, enjoy the rest of Roots Tech, everybody. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you very much thank for the much opportunity. Kids. And again, tomorrow night we have another one session like this one. So if you didn't get your questions answered, like we're back tomorrow. Exactly. Same time. Sure, so thank, thank you, you very much.